In today's video, we're going to be talking about the current conditions, diving into the upcoming pattern because there's a lot going on. We do have some severe weather to talk about as well coming up. Let's just get straight into this video. And first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery. And as you can see, there is quite a bit going on in the eastern and the northwestern United States, but the south central and southwestern United States are really dealing with not a whole lot. So let's take a look. We have first off some activity up here in the northwest that we'll zoom into we have some showery activity up here in the north central United States. We have quite a bit going on in the northeastern United States and a little bit going on over the, over the southeast in general here, uh, but not quite as much. We'll start out in the northwest as always, and this is an area that had a quieter couple of days, but it only lasted a couple of days. And now we're back to this kind of typical stormy pattern here. Uh, we have very light rain happening in most areas. There is those yellow areas there where there, it is going to be a little bit more moderate uh, and steady. So keep that in mind. As we kind of shift over here to our north central United States, we can see that there is just this pocket moving just about like this direction. Uh, this is lighter rainfall again uh, in the greens, but there is those yellows and, and darker greens showing up indicating a little bit of heavier rainfall going on so that is worth noting that there is some heavier pockets for sure still uh, but that is for the most part lightening up actually over the course of the morning so far as we kind of zoom out a little bit and take a look at our Great Lakes region there is some thunderstorms rolling through uh, we do expect really bad thunderstorms to the east of that area in the northeast, but for now, this is a little bit less intense than it's going to be, it appears. There is one active severe thunderstorm warning approaching the Detroit area, uh, but at this point, these storms are stronger, but they're not what they're going to be later uh, quite yet. Now, as we take a look at that area that's going to be experiencing th uh, severe thunderstorms later, there was some thunderstorms in the area over the course of this morning. These are kind of heading out. They're heading kind of towards the southeast, just like this, uh, and things are clearing up behind it. This clearing up is an important part of the severe weather because if there's already thunderstorms in the area, we've talked about, well, not recently, but we've talked about CAPE before, which is Convective Available Potential Energy, and it works as like thunderstorm food. But what ends up happening is if there's initial thunderstorms in the morning, they start to eat up some of the food before the actual severe weather later on can eat up the food, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's hard to explain, but those thunderstorms eat up that potential of the thunderstorms that come through later. Also, if there's thunderstorms in the area and cloudiness in the area, it doesn't allow things to heat up as much as it possibly could as if it was sunny. So that is important as well. We need to see if and if things end up getting sunny in this area or if it stays cloudy. because That's going to be big time uh, impacts for the severe weather a little bit later on. Now, also a little bit further southeast, we also have these thunderstorms extending down. I'm actually feeling those here in Virginia this morning. So there is quite a bit of thunderstorm activity kind of east of I-95 for the most part. Uh, you know, all the way from New Jersey, Delmarva, Virginia, uh, even North Carolina is feeling some of those showers and thunderstorms at this point. Now, as we move down to the southeast, there is just the sporadic showers, like I mentioned. It, they're very isolated. And they're mostly over water, but there is just that chance at an isolated thunderstorm or shower throughout the day today, which is very, very typical uh, for these regions. These are very tropical areas, so that is what ends up happening a lot of times. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about the upcoming weather, uh, where we're going to dive into the upcoming storminess, the upcoming temperature pattern, and the upcoming severe weather. All right, now here we are taking a look at that upcoming storminess. Let's just move this on towards this afternoon. And as you can see, that storminess will start to move in this afternoon to the severe weather regions here. It's going to be afternoon, evening time frame. We can see these showers up there continuing for the northwest. Let's keep going with this, though. And by the time we reach Friday afternoon, we can see the jet stream is doing just about like this. We see this storminess up here along the jet stream. There is a low right there as well. We do see some storminess underneath in here, kind of scattered around in some of these areas. And then we see another storm system in the jet stream as well, moving along that. It's fairly common to see something like that taking place. By the time we're reaching Saturday afternoon, this is the one where we have a really crazy jet stream, just about like this. So we will be experiencing colder temperatures here, warmer temperatures in here, and then once again, colder temperatures in there as well. 
it's going to be pretty wild. There is quite a bit of storminess here in the western United States, and things will be quieting up here for the eastern United States. That seems to be the trend. Um, and as you can see for Sunday, the 19th, it continues on like that. So quieter in the east and obviously more active in the west. Same story here on Monday, except it's actually kind of quieter in the west as well. So it's kind of quieter from coast to coast here uh, on Monday. And we see a jet stream about like this. The thing to note here is that sometimes in the longer, medium to longer range, the model does trend at things getting quieter, and then it doesn't really show much of anything, and then it does end up being a little bit more active than it shows. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't know what it's what is going to be happening. Um, it, it doesn't have a good handle on what that activity will look like, so it kind of just shows nothing. Uh, but in, in fact, there will be something happening. This could be like that, or it really could just be quiet. It's hard to tell either way. Uh, we do see that there is some storminess in this region, as well as a little bit diving down here in the eastern United States also. Uh, for Wednesday, this is going to be the 22nd. Uh, we see that the jet stream is pretty flat, and it's around in this area. And that also happens to be where a lot of that storminess is happening is in there as well. Uh, and that's because it really does follow the jet stream. Thursday, we do see that a low is developing up here. We do have a bit of a cold front extending down. This will bring some storminess along it. But outside of that, for Thursday the 23rd, I mean, where's the activity, you know? It's all up here. And then as we're ending the model run here, I mean, look at that. It, it is just so quiet for about at least four or five days there at the end of the model run. Really crazy stuff. And the jet stream's doing about like this, and there's a little bit of precipitation along it, but hardly any really. Most of the precipitation is happening south of the United States or north of the United States here. It's, it's pretty crazy. Now let's take a look at that total precipitation, and today we have to use the GFS model for this, only this one for some reason, the, the European model was not letting me load the total precipitation, so we have to use the GFS model here, but this is 240 hours, which is exactly 10 days, so this is your 10-day uh, precipitation forecast here, uh, and if you're anywhere in the whites, you're expecting pretty much no precipitation, your grays will be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation, Greens will be about a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. And then your reds will be two to five inches of precipitation. Now for total snowfall, we're obviously ex expecting a lot less than we were before. But we're still expecting a surprising amount here in my opinion. Uh, usually this time of year you'll maybe see like this area seeing a little bit of snowfall. But we have Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, all involved here. Look at that. There's tons of grays showing up, blues, uh, purples. This is the European model, by the way, through the next 10 days. And we have multiple states still expecting snowfall through pretty much July 1st, which is crazy. This is bordering on actually very unusual now. So uh, crazy stuff here with the total snowfall. I expected us to be done with this by now, actually, uh, and we are not quite done. It doesn't appear. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take we're going to take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern over the next 10 days. Now, here we are taking a look at that upcoming temperature pattern. And by the time we reach this afternoon, we can see a lot of warm temperatures underneath. We're going to see a lot of warmth here in the eastern United States. Really, the only cold is up here for the northwest, the north central and a little bit of the northeast here where there's rainfall happening. Let's just move this towards Friday afternoon, and things are going to get a little bit hotter tomorrow. We see that for the southeast, the uh, Rockies, areas like that, we're seeing more and more uh, warmth here expected. Saturday, June 8th, we have, this is, this is the date when we have that kind of more dramatic jet stream where we're seeing something more like this. So a lot of cold diving down here into the east and the west here, and it's the central United States primarily here where we see the warmth really surging in. Uh, Sunday, it's a lot of the same. Monday, even, it's a lot of the same. But what we see by Tuesday is that potential heat wave starting to move eastward. Uh, so we see it moving just in like this, these browns and, and grays in there, indicating high, high temperatures. Uh, we see that Wednesday, this does continue on for the southeast. So this is day two of 90s and 100 degree temperatures. Uh, that's 20 degrees above normal or more there in the grays, by the way. So if your average temperature is 80, you're officially at 100 on this frame, according to this model. Thursday, we see continue for the deep south and the southeast. Friday, still going on. And even Saturday, look at that. That sticks around for potentially 
I guess that would be four or five days. So four or five days of 90s and 100 degree temperatures. Absolutely crazy stuff, guys, on the upcoming temperature pattern with that potential heat wave. Now, here's the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. As you can see, this system has been highly suppressed to the southeast, where it's expected to pretty much track like this instead of what the European model was showing a couple of days ago, like this, which would be obviously much more impactful with all of this water to develop over. Instead, it's going to have little tiny times to develop, and it's just really not going to happen, I don't think. We have a 20% chance of development over the next five days at this point, which is 20% lower than what we had two days ago. So this is going down by about 10% every single day, and I do not expect development at this point. So... We probably won't talk about this again unless it's still here tomorrow. So we're officially retiring this disturbance, I think. Um, it, it's going to pretty much be an area of, of storminess, tropical downpours here for Central America for a couple of days here. Uh, but expect development is not expected. Uh, but it is a little tiny bit possible that this might become... Um, something very minuscule, but at this point it is looking very, very suppressed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the Storm Prediction Center. All right, now here we are taking a look at the Storm Prediction Center. In the lighter green areas, we have general thunderstorm risk. In the three darker green regions there, we have marginal risk. That's where we expect isolated severe weather to take place here on Thursday, June 16th. The two yellow regions is where we expect scattered severe weather. That's called our slight risk area. And then up there for Pennsylvania and New York in that orange area, that's our enhanced risk. And that's where we expect widespread severe weather to be possible for the interior northeastern United States. For the individual outlooks here, this is our damaging wind outlook. This is all based on 25 miles of a given location. The green regions there is our 5% chance area of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location. The two yellow areas there is our 15% chance area. And then our red area is our 30% chance of damaging wind area. And that's why we have the enhanced risk. For the hail outlook here, we do have three areas with 5% chance in the darker or in the green areas. Uh, we have two areas of 15% chance there in the yellow areas. We even have that hatched area up there in the northeast where you see it's kind of black hatched. And there, that is where we expect two inch diameter or larger hail to be possible, which is very, very weird for the eastern United States. You don't see that every day. So keep in mind, this could be a large hail day. For tornadoes, we have a 2% chance there within the two green regions and then a 5% chance there within the brown region. All right, now for day two, we have four general thunderstorm risk areas going on here. Uh, in the lighter green areas where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We have three marginal risk areas, one there for Idaho and Montana, one there for Wyoming and Montana, and then one there for the eastern United States, where we expect isolated severe weather to be possible on Friday, June 17th. For day three, we have three general thunderstorm risks going on here in the lighter green areas, and then we have one marginal risk there for Idaho and Montana again, where we expect isolated severe weather. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we are at a 4 out of 6. I'm waiting probably just one more day to move up to a 5 out of 6, and that's when I will feel more confident in that heat wave. We will move up. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons. Bill Kreitz, James Wade, Dovin Eagle, Lil the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kovilesa, Capite, Charles Dennett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite Steam Fan and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.